A former chief of staff to former Rochas Okoracha Uchemwosu has urged the former governor of Imo State, Emeka Ehedioha, and the other chieftains who left the People's Democratic Party to join the All Progressives Congress APC. The Mwosu, who is an APC chieftain in Imo, said that the former deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, that the APC will give him a rare opportunity to work with Governor Hope Uzadema and President Balatinubu at the center. Ehedioha had on April 23rd announced his resignation from the People's Democratic Party, a political platform he associated with since its inception in 1998. And just recently, of course, the former Imo state governor paid a visit to Alex Oti in Isiarangwa. And the question is, where will Right Honorable America Ehedioha pitch his tent now that he has left the PDP? This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Obodo. Welcome to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV, a program that X rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. With the PDP struggling to keep its head when all is about it, what's next for Emeka Hedioha? Joining me tonight on the Eastern Eye is Barrister Nadiumi of Okansi. He is a constitutional lawyer and public affairs analyst. Ochoa Globe, thank you so much for joining me tonight on the Eastern Eye. Thank you, Alex, for having me and thanks to the viewers. So I'm typically, I'm sure you, you already know that Mekei Hodeha has left the PDP and as you can see, he's been courted by a number of people one wouldn't know whether the visit to Isi Alangwa was <laughs> also a result of him being courted by the Labour Party. But then, what do you think about his departure from the PDP and the issues around his departure before we talk about where he would possibly head to? Well, you see, first of all, let's look at the personality of uh, Emeka Hedion. Um, Emptying the Nigerian political sphere, he is a heavyweight. He has been a deputy speaker of the House of Representatives. He has also been a governor, albeit a very short term governor for that matter. He was chased out by the Supreme Court. I use the word chased out because uh, even within the Supreme Court, uh, they still disagree with the judgment that removed uh, Mekhi Yedia. <clears throat> now, like very many other people, including myself, including Peter, he has ever been in PDP. And um, with the political trend now enveloping the nation, he left the PDP. But it will be a side calculation for him if he jumps from the frying pot into the fire. What do I mean? Um... There is already a revolution going on in Nigeria, political revolution, epitomized by the governor of Abia State. Every right-thinking man, every right-thinking human being, well, somebody might say it is not his party that is doing it. It is Alex Oti. But remember, he came from a political party. And that political party has their manifesto. And that manifesto, among other things, is trying to show the people that they are the masters and not you, but you are the servant leader. That is exactly what Alex Oti is optimizing. And with him, at the full corner of every campaign that is going to be carried out by the Labour Party, you see. Uh, one old teacher in the prime, I'm going to primary school, he always tells that the test of the food is in eating. So, the test of good governance is there. You see, good governance is not something you advertise. It's not something you come to television as like this to tell the world that I turned the road from uh, Central Bank to Apple TV. Because we ply the road. And when we ply the road, we know that it's hard. And you know it was done by Alex, the governor of Enugu State, for instance. 
So you don't come, you don't need to come and advertise it for us. If you do a project, who was that? I think it was um, Lumumba, Professor Lumumba, the the social crusader. He said that if you do a 10 billion naira project as a governor, as a president, and use just 500,000 to advertise it, you have done nothing. Because that thing you did, we advertise itself. And to government achievement, if they show you, they see our eye, with the touch up, with the fill up. Even if you want to test them, like what I can test them. So, it don't be something we can tell people, I did this, I didn't do that. So, Alex Oti, with the kind of wave he's carrying about, and the head you are going to visit him. We already know where the pendulum is swinging. You see, Imo is also one of the unlucky states. From Achikeo Demwa to Ohakweriye, Mechakwa Okupo Mwe. And uh, what do, what's the other person's name again? Te Rocha Sokorocha. Uh, who concentrated on building monuments and uh, statues in the Imo state. Imo has also been very unlucky. Now, with this one now, here now, Oposolima. You see, I don't also like to take on Oposolima because people will say I have my mindset already towards him. And I said it from scratch that he is not going to break even. He's not going to be a wonderful success. Four years has gone by, elapsed. He's entered his second four years. Um, the Ibo man often say, if the first child did not crawl, the second one cannot run. If he, he hope did not do anything meaningful for the world to see in four years, you don't expect him in second term when he was at such a massive wealth for himself, for his comfortable retirement at home. So, I heard your has next move. I think if he's going to follow my own political calculation, let him go where the eyes is now focused. And that is the Abia way. So that if we can liberate him, liberate Abia, South East will be making a good step. So that's where I see the issue of his movements. Yes. Now, as to the one I said, moving from prime pan into the pie, you find out that the APC chieftain who said that he should work with proposal of Limassol that he can also connect with Tinubu at the center. Who cares? So the kind of connection he wants is the type that. Uh, Overnight, fuel price will move from 650 naira to 800 naira between Friday and today. And then there is even no fuel anywhere to see to buy. That is the kind of movement you want him to join and connect at the center. See, we should start telling ourselves the simple truth. People are not going to be measured by their achievements. And there are people who will tell you, I present to you here, but I stand at the for cancer. As your local government chairman, I trust his ability to deliver. They will look back on the man who is saying that. Who is saying this thing? They say it's Opus Alima. Ah, these people, they don't come again. They say it's Alex. So it's, ah, Ogana, okay, you talk out. I beg, will they follow you? So that's why, that's the presentation I'm trying to give. I just gave it by word of analysis. So that you now know where I'm, my business is swinging. Not because I am Labour Party. But because we need to liberate the South East. And is that, is that revolution has started already in Abia. So when you say that we need to liberate, you've used it, this is about the third time yes. you talked about liberating the South. And before I go to where uh, Honorable Ihedio is yeah. heading to, when you say you need to liberate the Southeast, is, is the Southeast under some kind of siege or some bondage. kind of bondage? Yeah, we are. We are. We don't do respect to us in the Southeast. We are not bondage. Now, let me give you a few analysis. There are five states in the southeast. If you take from the state where we are, that's Enugu here. From the era of Chimaroki, was the, the first eight years of, we don't know where we're going, because the army just handed over. So Chimaroki could be forgiven, because they, he didn't know the difference between the military regime and the civilian regime. He doesn't know that the civilian governor is the servant of the people and not the master. So he was trying to carry out the military toga. So that's why most of the time I forgive Chimaroke. But Sullivan came on board and tried to change the dynamics. The thing, like I said, government achievement, you they see them, you they feel them, you they touch them, you can even test it. Within that eight years, it was Eldorado. Then Ruburu came. His whole eight years was like the words I wrote in his poem, a wasted generation. That eight years was a wasted eight years. With all due respect to the young man, 
he wasted our eight years. But he dragged us back by 16 years. Now, Peter Mba is now on the saddle. The issue is that I think Peter Mba is biting more than he can chew at the same time. That is one error he is trying to create for himself. You see, you don't carry every project at the same time. You move simultaneously. You are looking, you promised us water in 180 days. It's almost heading to the year, like 360 days. Let the water even be there in 360 days, which is also not visible. Now, he could have reckoned with the fact that there are old pipes that need to be changed, and they need to be dug out. They don't float on air. It's not electricity installation, electric installations. Now, <clears throat> he's scraping some roads, very many roads, all at the same time. Now, there is this hike now in cement and the review by some contractors. A lot of the work has halted. These are by the way. Now, the other one is the muslin taxation he has imposed on the people. That muslin taxation is not to be encouraged. Why shouldn't we encourage it? Ordinarily, taxation drives any economy. But you must have to make sure the people have something doing before you impose such taxes. Let me not dwell so much on any state. Let's get to a boy. Same Ugu, a lot of uh, landmarks in education. After him, now, really, I, what you call it, uh, a boy went into coma for another 80 years. After a boy coma, then David Mai. Now, he created infrastructure without corresponding wealth in the pocket of the Abbey, the, the boy man. So the flyovers did not translate into money in the pocket. Some of these flyovers, why we commend them, could have been used in building industries that will employ some a boy youths. Now, Wifu is now on the saddle. We don't even know yet where Wifu is going. The young man is soft-spoken. We are waiting for him. But you are waiting, you are waiting enough. One year is more than ten, enough time to wait. Now, you go to Imo State. I've just briefly given an answer of Imo State. So that's because I'm a big that yeah, wants to get back to Imo State. Now, you also talk about uh, Alhambra State. But may God accept his soul wherever he's going, whether in paradise or purgatory or hell. But the man sent Alhambra back by 20 years. Within that four years, he ruled Alhambra State. Schools were not in session for over four years. Professional rulers received no money. Uh, pensioners were neglected. Workers were not paid for four good years. Twelve calendar months, stands by four. Now, Peter became, did his best with the limit he can in four years. That's what Ngige. Ngige came. Ngige's turn was also short lived. Ngige's own success was based on the war that the SLOs staged on him. He now decided to work for the people. So it became one, uh, what is called it, one. Uh, uh, this thing for the another and another person. So it is bad bit for the other man, good bit for the other people. So because they fought him to send the state allocation, the man decided to say, I will not share the state allocation. Rather, I wish that one for the people. Even though his tenure was for about 13 months before Peter became improved very much on what they did. And then Obi Ajo, Obi Anok, Obi Ajo okay. came. And he came from Anambra North, where people expected him to develop that part of Anambra State. Because we Bandu had a Bandu who had Bandus with them. He now went back again, and like a bulbul in Enugu here, sent the Anambra back again by another eight years. Luckily for them, Soludo came now, so let's completing some projects that Peter B started in Anambra North, Sintonas, which was abandoned by him, but Mbobiajo, Obiano, and then now being completed by the present governor. So now you can see it has been back and front, back and front for states in the southeast. So no one can say between the year 1999, and 2024, it has been Eldorado. If what is happening in Abia today has happened for 16 years only in one state, all of us will move down to that state to stay because no other place will be habitable apart from that state. So that's why I said we are under bondage, but we need liberation. And mm -hmm. the people that can liberate us are people that have the same mindset with Alex Oti. All right, so well, now that you've, you've made an analysis, obviously this, these are your own assessments. <laughs> Or your own assessment of the southeast, it might differ when another person comes to take the seat. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Honorable Maki Hedioha. Where do you think you will head to? You, you seem to be making a case for him to head to the Labour Party. But do you think he will join the Labour Party? It looks like the pressure is on him to join the PDP. APC. 
Oh, of the, the APC. Uh, he joined the APC. The APC. Yes. And the pressure will be on him. Is it, is it like this thing some of us say, like Tinubu Kiba and telling people, we want to attract foreign investors. And we are attracting the foreign investors in a site that is reading with Boko Haram, kidnappers, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, independent and autonomous agitators. Foreign investors, what you do in your state, attract them. You don't need to go there and tell them to come. They will know where they should invest their money. So what I'm saying is that, I said, when I opened my speech, I said he's a political big wig. And it is a force to be reckoned with politically in Nigeria. At least from the two positions he has occupied, Deputy Speaker, Nigerian House of Representatives, Governor, Imo State, for some short period. And then what he did in Imo, within that very short number of months he was in Imo State as Governor, created a signpost where he was going. So that could have been even where Alex Oti could have been copying. But Supreme Court didn't allow him to do anything. So they cut his tether of short. And uh, I still say they cut his tether of short because you can't tell me that you pack ballot papers in Ghana must go and carry it to the Supreme Court and they will accept it as his bit and they record it for you. Such things are never done. And that was why when the man went back, because they didn't understand what the court did for a fresh interpretation of their judgment. Justice West and gave a dissenting judgment that lasted for over two hours while we were reading it. After reading the judgment, Alex, you know that people don't clap in court. Supreme Court erupted into clap. People were clapping at you. The journalists could not control them. The policemen could not control them. But the court had even to rise. And when people came down, they came back. That shows you that your man alone, a good market says itself. So Edio has already started. A program in which some of these governors could have been copying if they had been allowed to execute, execute them. But now he's not going to copy from Alex Oti because Alex Oti has improved in what he's going to do. So if he comes into Imo State again as governor on the Labour Party, certainly. You see, the one thing you have to understand is that election in 2027, I do believe. Is going to be slightly and gravely different from what you have been having. Because if Ibo man says, the first one happened to us because we felt we have done the right thing by coming to cast our vote for a preferred candidate. All of a sudden, they are the unthinkable and wrote whatever they wanted. And it then became a problem. We also said, let us follow it legally. But also knowing that where we are running to. <laughs> like the Nkarama sees his means, oh, yeah, I'm one of who. So where you are hiding, because you are hiding from us, if you see you, you see? So <laughs> that is where we got it slightly wrong. And it was because Peter said, let us exhaust the limits of legality. What you could even has come to us and said, we're Nigerians. You gave me a mandate. You see what has happened to it. If you know how to get it back, I hands off. The nation will be boiling, but that's not the type of man. He exploded into the last digits. Today, he is still the talk of the day. Wherever he goes, he is in headline news. If he comes to Aja TV today, tomorrow, just go and read the papers. If he goes to a supermarket in front of that place to say, how are you, everybody here? He needs to make frontline news. And people will be buying it to see what their best president ever was, they said. So, if such a person could say commander kind of respect, even after he was shot changed, that shows you there's something unique in that young man. And everybody that contested the election with him, and no more than anywhere to be found, apart from Tinubu, who is now the president. There are more than eight or nine people who contested this election. Where is the article? Apart from coming back for the next meeting the other day in Abuja, nobody knows where he has gone to. Where is uh, Morgano? Where are those people? Where is one person? All the people who contested this election with him, where are they? They all of them have disappeared. He's still the person making the hitting for land news. So that's why I said, he the should pitch his tent where the people anticipate he should go in the land of achievement. And that is where I'm rooting for him to go and get Labour Party tickets, get Labour Party card, declare for Labour Party, become a member of Labour Party. Let us see what Ibo can do to make their state move forward. Like every other state in the South, it's not only Imo. 
But remember, this is the only Enugu is still the only state now being governed by PDP. Every other state in South East has by the way. But telling me to go that he's going to APC, or that APC is worrying him. If they coerce him into coming into APC and giving the ticket of uh, Imo State governorship, well, unless of course they do the normal carry in must go. Even though I know that every woman knows bad market where he sees one. Remember, Buhari has been contesting presidency election. Even when he won the presidency in 2015, I wanted to contest again, I think in 2019 or thereabout. Still, he lost in the Southeast. Reason, the Igbo man, the Southeasterners, they know bad market when they see one. And they know that it's not a good market. That's why the fact that even a sitting president, they don't care. Because we're egalitarian by nature. We feed ourselves. We get to, but we contribute to government. Every other part of Nigeria, government give them. Here in the Southeast, and even South-South, we give to government. If you go to Anambra State, go and check how many rules that were done by private individuals and come to be commissioned by government. Between EFCC and about, and uh, what is it called? That uh, Anglican Secondary School there. Then moving in, that road was done by Ogris of uh, Mako. A traditional ruler. And government, everybody is enjoying it. So here in the Southeast, we prepare, we contribute our infrastructures and hand over to government. Mm. In other parts of Nigeria, they wait for government to come and do it for them. So we know bad market when we see one. If you had your have a chance, feel that the best way to do it is to go to the crooks in order to join the crowd for the purpose of conformity, he will lose out. Mm. Put me, he will lose out. All right, so you, you, you painted a picture and you pointed out that Enugu is the only state for now that yes. is governed by the PDP. PDP. Do you think that the PDP is living in its last years in the southeast, or do you think it will have a resurgence? It has, actually, it has actually lived its days. 2023 election. Only that the Shedding Negan that played out brought in PDP again in Enugu. After all, tell me how INEC can slash 30,000 votes through 15,000 into the dust can and then count 15,000. That one that was thrown into the dust can, who can who vote, who, who had those votes? So let us leave that one. PDP was rejected in the entire Southeast, but their last uh, uh, requiem was, was last year's <laughs> election. They could have uh, sang their requiem by last year's election, but somehow, somehow, they managed to skate through in their usual way, but I know it might not happen again. Take it from me. Mm. All right. This is the Eastern Eye. It's time for us to take a break. When we return, we'll find out what exactly is Honorable Ihedioha running away from in the PDP. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on IFA TV. We are reaching you live from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria with me, Alex Obodo. So, stay here with my guests, Barista Nadimo for can see. So, exactly what is chasing Right Honorable uh, Ihedioha away from the PDP because uh, he's been there since 1998 and suddenly he writes a letter saying that he has resigned from the PDP. What's chasing him away? Well, that thing that chased away Peter from PDP is chasing him away. That thing that chased Nadima Fokasi away from PDP is chasing him away. The era of Imposition of candidates, the era of intimidations, the era of being disconnected with the people. These things are chasing any reasonable politician out of PDP. Besides, if you look at what is been happening at the national level of the PDP, you see whichever political party I have moved out from, I hardly discuss it. But because he kept repeatedly asking me, he find out that in two thousand and the 23 election, a group of people that call themselves concerned Nigerians, of which I was a member then, we were all in PDP, we marched to Wadaza Plaza and told the then chairman of PDP was that, that they should give us as a consensus candidate. Man I said it's not for him to decide alone. If it will be going to be a consensus or not, it's not for any society. That was a big rally in Abuja that day. We dispersed. Obasanjo called all the contending candidates for the presidency 
under PDP. Talk to them one on one. Give them the same. If you want to walk back to Asorok, please make this man your consensus candidate. It seems that Nigerians want him. Now, with that platform of PDP, ordinarily, if they are listening to the voice of reason, they could have this greater strength to protect their votes more than the Labour Party is dominated by young stars, almost virtually about 80%. They didn't take that advice. They were also told, if you must feed a candidate, since it, we're now rotating it from north to south, feed it from the south so that the south can then decide if the southwest are taken before in Upper Sanjo. Let's go to the southeast. PDP still ignored it and feeded Atika Abubakar almost a fourth time. Remember, Atika Abubakar also contested this presidency, even under whether an APC or whatever party. At that time, he ran down PDP. Later, he came back to PDP. Now, you found out that also, during the presidential, you are talking about what is chasing here yeah, out of PDP. I'm trying to give you this by way of analysis. During the primary election, that produced Atiku Abubakar. The delegates from Anambra were all portals in a hotel in Abuja. They were actually you know, let me say greased. Their pants were well greased, both in Naira and in Dollar. And one of them had the F-100 to copy to me and tell him, look at what is happening. Are you sure you are going to match these people money for money? It's not as if P2B is a poor man. But he said one thing. That is the thing I am coming in to fight. This purchase of tickets on the highest bidder. It is like I want the son of Mr. Nobody to become somebody without knowing anybody or without even having anything. If I investigate and found out it is true, I verify that it is true, certainly I might not be condoning it because it's better for me to do the right thing and fail rather than to do the wrong thing and win. He investigated it and found it was true. Just like Edward did his own, he threw his papers and said he's resigning. They're asking me why is he head of living PDP. A lot of things, PDP, like I said, they are ripping mass. Ripping is the mass you say for people who are dead. It's a ripping mass. PDP ripping mass was actually said during the 2023 election. But it's like one Alan Brahman used to tell me that people don't die once. If you are growing old, sometimes your ear will die. You won't hear anything again. It will come to the eye. You won't be seen anymore. If your teeth will die, you can't treat anything that is strong. Maybe your mouth will die. You won't even recognize any woman again. <laughs> when your body cannot carry the whole thing, your body will carry it. So that's where the man now dies. So maybe the percentage that remains in the PDP that is not dead yet, that's where I'm going. Maybe it remains about 20 or 30 percent. So maybe by 2027 election, that one will also die off. Because maybe the ear is dead already. The eye doesn't see anymore. The teeth can't even bite it. So you're saying that the PDP is yeah. currently going through what you might call multiple organ failures. Okay, so exactly. It's just waiting for the doctor to Gradual multiple dead. organ failures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so That's almost virtually all the organs are dying. So, so let's look at the role of some of the individuals, or if you like, the key stakeholders in the PDP, yeah. like Nyesu Nwike, Atiku Abubakar, yeah. even those that have served as principal officers, Iyocha, you for instance, yeah. it, everyone is saying now that it was the tussle over chairmanship of the PDP between... Over the soul of PDP. Well, over the soul so of the PDP <laughs> between Nyesu Nwike and, and Atiku, Atiku that led to formation of the G5 governors. So is, is, is this... Is this Possibly one of the biggest shockers that the PDP received to build up to the election. And even with their last NECA meeting, it was still the same tussle for the son of PDP who retains supremacy, weaker article. And um, like Biboman also say, a man who 
die by beating. Always fight in the market. And when he's fighting, he will go and fight near the place where they sell long grass of sugar cane. So that his adversaries will use that sugar cane to flow and, 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 and then send it to his grave. <laughs> so uh, they also say that when you are in the farm and you are cultivating mounds of yam heaps, sometimes you keep on cleaning your hand because sansan san, mm. keep it on your hand. They will tell you somebody that will be one in the farm field, God put sand into his hand because he will tell you that he has been busy cleaning the sand. That's why the others would be at home, crossed him. So, so why you are moving on. So, uh, uh, the war of Atiku and Wike, you can see, Wike is even fighting for the soul of the PDP. Whose soul is he actually fighting for? Is it even the soul of APC or soul of PDP? Remember what happened in uh, River State election between the votes of Labour Party and the vote of APC. Remember also what happened in Wicke's speech that he will never ever be a minister. Today, what is he? Minister of Federal Capital Territory. And he is serving under an APC government. There is nothing wrong with a coalition government. Even in 19, 1979, P MPP and MPN has that kind of marriage or company that doesn't last long. So somewhere along the line, it also crashed. But this one is an individual that was singled out and made a minister from the opposing party. And he accepted it and is working assiduously to ensure that the party that he's serving succeeds. Even though I see his actions as counterproductive because my kind of person, if I were a president, I won't with a long spoon appoint a week, even as a cleaner in my office, because he will destroy the office. He is going to destroy capital territory, that office. He's also going to implicate the presidency. You know, at least you can check how many suits he has arrested already in less than nine months in office. Go to Abuja and see how many suits that are flooding the high courts and the federal high courts in Abuja over actions of week. So, such a person. One that doesn't control his mouth. You see, when your mouth, when your rabble rouse, you have less time to think. That's the way I see Wiki. Initially, I saw Wiki. There was a way I was seeing Wiki when he entered the politics, even when he was chairman of OBI, our local government. I saw him as, you know, a starting young, a young man that has a lot of future politically. But I think Nigerian politics, especially when it's coupled with excess money, gets into the brain of a lot of people. Wicked on entered his brain. Immediately he was, I think, made a chief of staff. From chief of staff, he became governor. I think that he entered his brain. And then he amassed wealth. Stupendous amassment of wealth. He has amassed wealth to an excessive level. Combined with power, he became uncontrollable. So the best option to do is not to give him a minister. If you must have to appoint him anything, you can appoint him a special advisor. But not a special advisor where he has to talk to the press. Because they come talking to the press, he can even implicate you the president. So the best option is give him a special advisor. Even if it's on humanitarian affairs, give him an office, pay his salary. Let him just be in your government. But Tinubu has made that grave error of appointing him. He has already appointed him. He can also fire him. Because if he fires him, they kind of we could come to television and tell the world that I have to rig him in in River State. So the best object is to leave him there for the four years. When they are shoveling cabinets, maybe God willing, if the man comes for a second tenor, he will shovel him out. If he doesn't come back, bye bye, good relax to bad rubbish, all of them. So that is where I'm saying that the fight for the soul of PDP between Wike and Atiku. I don't actually know who is fighting for what. All right, so now that you've, you've taken your time to look at the role played by Wike in uh, in the, the fortunes of the PDP. What about Atiku? Because a lot of people are saying that, well, that Atiku knew that the person who just finished his tenure was from the north, that there was no need for him to have insisted on contesting. That's what, that's what I told you earlier. I told you that part of the thing that led to the requirement mass for PDP is their inability to control their leaders. I said 
we went to Pla Wadala Plaza even before the primaries and told the PDP, I think it was your child then also, give us Peter as a constitutional candidate in PDP. We will fight to make sure he's retained because we know the PDP has the structure, has the strength to protect its votes all over Nigeria. We know that. And then they now went, brought in brought in other governors who now went to decide how they are going to do the zoning. They say it is now left open that anybody can contest from anywhere. What a mess. Do you know that it is not done? Because I, I, what is it? Uh, uh, Buhari, who just finished his tenure, is from the north. And it is unwritten that he will rotate this even north and south. Of course, I did eight years. The other day I came on board. The last terror was cut short by sickness and death. Jonathan took over on emergency basis. And that was why Jonathan could not go for a second tenor after completing the remaining uh, uh, three years or two years and of uh, the other man. And there is all four years. Well, actually, I mean, what's on record is that well, Julia Jonathan lost the election. No, that's why I not, said not that he couldn't go. No, that he couldn't go because people now felt he has completed the northern tenor, which ordinarily should belong to them. But because it was given to a Southerner, so be it. But let him not add more to it because he will disorganize the equation. So he insisted and contested. And the people who were even having sympathy for him in the North had no more sympathy. It was the people in the South that had sympathy for him. So he lost the election. At least he considered defeat to Buhari. Now, Buhari exhausted the first four years. The second four years was the Makaba dance. How he got in there, only God knows. But somehow, somehow, I never told us that he has won. And we have no choice rather than to accept that he has won. Who are we to challenge the almighty I neck? If they can pull your legs from here and tell you around the governor of Kogi State, who are we to say no? They will tell you simply go to court. And the court you are going, you don't even know whether there is a landmine laid for you in that court even before you step in. So that is where we are going. So the issue is that Atiku knew that the sympathy he had in the South will immediately abate because he decided to usurp the position of the South. I was fully articulated during the campaign, Buhari campaign 2015, because it was the North. We were all articulated people. Everybody was nice and articulated, articulated, articulated. Even when he contested for the second, during Buhari second, everyone was saying, let this man go, Buhari. We are suffering enough. Let Atiku come in. Now, they also did it the way they did it. Now, for Atiku to have now also come back to say again that now that he has come down to the south, that he's going to be articulated again. That was where he got it wrong. He saw that there was no articulation. And again, a tsunami entered the political terrain that swept virtually all of them off their feet. Save I neck that he couldn't sweep off his feet. Because even if they have also swept I neck off his feet, they could have done the right thing. At least in Senegal, we have such an example. In Nigeria, we have such an example when Jonathan considered defeat and congratulated Buhari. In Senegal, a sitting president has also congratulated the young boy of 43 years who won the presidency. So that's what we want. Though, though, though the current president wasn't on the ballot, it has to be mentioned too. The, the Makisau wasn't on the ballot. He was just ending his tenure. Uh, he, but of no, course, no, no, no. He, he wasn't on the ballot. But of course, the, 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 the person that... He has a political party. Uh, yes. And uh, somebody came from his political party. Yes. And, and he was a senior politician. Yes. And that person who came from his party lost the election. And he considered to the young man. So this is what we want to happen in Africa. Otherwise, if we don't do the right thing politically, there is no way people will not be celebrating military posh. Like they are celebrating it in the uh, uh, Nigerian Republic, celebrating it, uh, what is the other country again? Uh, 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 or is it Gabi or so? And this other place again. There are people who are celebrating the military. And they find out that in Nigeria election 2023, do you know how many people that died from election violence? But in the military crews, the three military crews we have had in West Africa, nobody lost his life. So which one is that better? Is it now that you should encourage military regime or you should encourage civilian regime? So when we under undergo Normal campaigns say we want to elect a president, civilian president. Talks kill voters, main voters, dislodge people from their voting lineage. But when the military take over, take over power in most of African states, it is bloodless, seamlessly bloodless. And people celebrate them as they get into power. 
So whatever political uh, regime or political system that uh, will be agreeable and agreeable to a given race, that race should encourage it. Don't say that the Obama said it must be democracy, and democracy is governed by vote. If a military regime kills you people, better food on your table, gives you employment, makes the economy more stable, and then makes you enhance your natural resources, why not we go for military regime? Since the civilian regime could not give you those ones. In Britain, they have the parliamentary election. They still have the queen, now the king. So the monarchy is runs parapas with the parliament. Do we say it must be parliamentary, simpliciter? So why should the queen come to integrate the parliament? So you find out that this is a political system akin and peculiar to that race. America runs a presidential system. The presidential system works for them, no matter how bogus it might seem. But you don't need to import it hook, sink, and line because America said we must run political system. So we can devise our own. Absolutely. That's a good place to live it. I have to thank you so much, Barrister Nadiume of Orkansi. Yeah. He's a constitutional lawyer and a public affairs analyst. He's a farmer too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> you keep on forgetting that. Thank you, Alex. Your analysis on the Eastern Eye tonight. Yes, thank you very much for having me. That's All right. And that's, the, and that's the Eastern Eye tonight. Mm -hmm. Up next is Nka with favor. My name is Alex Obodo. Good night. Mm -hmm. Can I help you?